Steve Jewin, MMA Mania. Mr. Paul, Semtex Daily, how are you doing today, sir? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? I'm excellent, and I'm really excited for this Bellator 199 fight you have coming up with John Fitch. How are you feeling about that fight? I'm happy to be fighting. Um, it could have been anybody, really, but I'm, I'm just happy to be fighting. You know, I've always performed well um, in, in San Jose. You know, I know it's his hometown, but I like the thing that people know when, when they come to see me fight that, that there's going to be some kind of entertainment and they're going to get their get the, the money's worth. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I'm just looking forward to going out there fighting, finally. Well, they definitely got their money's worth the last time in September when you knocked out Lorenz Larkin. But is that too long of a layoff for yeah. you? Yeah, most definitely. Um, you know, um, I feel like I should have been put out a lot sooner than that. They obviously thought different, whether it's the fact that I've got two fights left or what. But what I don't get um, is, is I speak to people at Bellator and I don't feel like I'm valued. Well, if I'm not valued, why are you holding me for these cards? Why don't you just keep putting me out? Put me in your Pachanga Casino Resorts and put me in a, in, in your, your smaller shows. Just just get rid of me. But they say one thing and they're doing another. So you either value me and you treat me like you value me or you just put me out and let me run my contract and get, go somewhere else. This is how I feel. This is why I'm happy to be fine because promises have been made and... and Promises haven't been kept, and the Bellator are saying this shit is like it's because of the I didn't accept the MVP fight. Well, I've made it clear I'm not going to beat Lorenz Larkin, who beat a former UFC welterweight champion, who's ranked in the top ten when he left the UFC to go and fight MVP, who hasn't fought anybody. And in his last performance, of Torrentes against Fernando Gonzalez, a guy that I beat with one hand. Like, no, I don't want that fight. Give me a big name. And it took me spit in my dummy out, as we say in the UK, to finally get a fight with the likes of a name like John Fitch. Um, the matchup isn't great for me as far as wrestlers are strikers in my history, but thank fuck they listened to me and actually gave me someone that I'm worthy of fighting coming on the back, back of a, a win like Lorenzo Larkin. Um, and that's that. Uh, as you can hear, I'm, I'm not happy with the promotion. I don't even want to be doing these hour-long interviews that I'm going to have to do. It's not because I don't like doing media, but because these guys treat me like I'm not valid to them. But why the hell am I always main event or co-main event? Why am I always the one doing all these media calls if people don't want to see me fight, if people ain't interested in me? Put me on Pachanka Resort, let me fight out my contract, and let me go. That's how I feel right now. Well, I can assure you both as a reporter and as a fan that we do appreciate you and that we always want to see you fight. And I'm glad that you got the fight that you feel is worthy of your time because John Fitch is coming off being a former world champion for a different organization and was the number one contender in UFC, fought George St. Pierre there. In fact, you and Fitch were both in UFC around the same time, but the two of you never crossed paths. No, this is a great fight. Like I said, this is the kind of fight that I feel makes sense coming off the lock and fight. Like you said, he, he was a champion at, the, at uh, another promotion and in that run as champion or in the build up to that, he built, beat some other fantastic guys. This is a good fight. This is the, the type of fight that I'm happy to be having. Um, do I wish it would have came sooner? Yes. And do I think Fitch is, uh, is, despite him being a little older than he was in his prime, he's, he's still, he's still a, a world class operator. So I'm happy that a fight like this has been put together. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, it's a good fight, like you say. Well, when I talked to Fitch, he said age is just a number. He feels he's still as good at 40 as he ever was. And I said, well, age shouldn't be a number anyway because look at how many fights Paul Daly has had and he's only 35. Yeah, most definitely. I don't. I don't really think age age is too much of a factor. You know, he's he, he's a fantastic wrestler, and you don't just lose that. Um, you know, just just as just as much as I'm a, I'm a fantastic striker, and and you don't really lose that. Do you lose some timing? Do you lose a little bit of speed, durability, um, stuff like that? Yeah. And I know he's trained hard and he would have had to train hard, but how has his, his body reacted to pushing himself to being in such shape to take on a guy like me? How's it going to hold up in the fight? Um, we don't know. 
And yes, his skills are all there as a wrestler, he's being 40 or, or whatever, but his chin isn't. And he, he drops and knocked out a, a few times. And as we know, it only takes me just to touch you once. And we know he's going to be trying to avoid that for 15 minutes. And we know I'm going to be looking for it for 15 minutes, which is why it's such an interesting fight. But, you know, I don't want to hurt the old guy. But if I hit, hit Fitch on his chin, you know, he's going to realize that he's an old man. And, right. Uh, I'm pretty sure it will be unconscious. I'm sure most fighters who fought you can attest to the fact they've never felt the power like anybody else. So would you say anybody else Fitch has ever fought can compare to the kind of power you bring? I don't think so. You know, I don't think so. You know, Hendricks knockout was a pretty, pretty nasty one. And, and you know, I've seen him be dropped in trouble by lesser strike because myself with blows that seem like they're only glancing blows. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the fight. You know, I feel like I've prepared very well. Um, and, and I, f- I feel in a good place. And I, I feel like it's, it's, uh, going to be a tough night for John Fitch. You know, the interesting thing is Fitch actually claimed, not that I give this credence and you will certainly shoot it down, but he thinks that maybe your chin isn't what it used to be. My chin is one of what it used to be, you know. Um, that 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 could possibly be a true statement, but I haven't been knocked out in over fifty eight fights. So, have I been rocked? Have I have I taken some moments right to, to to get my balance? Yes, yeah. but against younger, stronger, more durable opponents, you had you had Douglas Lima, the the former world champion. Trouble me in the first 30 seconds of a fight with a heavy clean shot and he couldn't put me away for 15 minutes. So is that, is that a durable chin or is that a suspicious chin? You, you have Brendan Ward, another wrestling knockout artist, knocked everybody out. He caught me with a shot in the first round of the fight. He gave me jelly legs. How did that fight end? Did I recover? <laughs> did I win the fight? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, the human body is not supposed to take clean shots to the chin. And if you are hit and your balance isn't there, yeah, maybe you will, you'll be affected by that shot a little. Okay. And, and that, that is expected in the fight game. But I hit you on the chin. Whether your balance is solid or not, it's a different story. And uh, all of the first things that Fitz will say is for his, for his confidence. I understand that because he, he needs it. Um, coming into this fight, but he knows it, it's just talk. He's going to be shooting for takedowns just as Brendan Ward did, a more, a more credible striker with more knockout power who promised to stand and trade. And it, I think it was within the first 30 seconds that he fought fuck this and it's quite well shot for, for, for takedowns. So I think it'll go the same with Fitch. If he thinks my chin chin's weak, then let's stand and bang and we'll see what happens. Right. And, you know, with that Brennan Ward fight, I was hugely shocked by that. Not that fighters don't play a smoke and mirrors game where they say one thing and do another, but in 90% of Brennan Ward's fights, he'll just stand and trade no matter what. So when he did shoot for that takedown, you must have been like, wow, he must really be afraid of my power. No, I wasn't wow because I said at the press conference that was going to happen. People do not understand. Um, what it's like to be hit by me. And I think you, you can just see that by the, my knockouts and when I hit people and, and their reaction, you know, even to the Larkin knockout, he, he was in pure shock. He did, you can believe it. He was side on and he just completely lost his, his, his awareness of where he was. He was completely gone. And that was with just a, a little left hook. I didn't even fully load it up. People don't understand until we get hit. And, and, you know, Fitch, if he wants to stand and bang, then let's do that. But as a, if I was his corner, I would be telling him to do what he does best, which is what I'm expecting him to try and do, which is wrestle. So it'd be a very, very short night if he comes out trying to throw punches. So since you're expecting a wrestling fight from John Fitch, and that is pretty much his bread and butter, even by his own admission, what is the game plan to prevent 
and stuff those takedowns and keep him at your range? You know, um, we have a, a game plan. Um, you know, I've trained to execute that game plan, and, and I feel I've been been sparring with the right type of of feed, as I call it, the right type of food. You know, the right type of guys that can give me give me certain pressures that I expect to to feel in the fight. So, you know, fingers crossed on the night it it plays out as as it has done in, in sparring sessions and and. You know, I perform like I've been performing, and if that is the case, then whether whether he stands and trades or whether he tries to take it to the ground, it will be a short night because I've, I've prepared very well for this fight. So it's really just muscle memory. Then you just need training partners who are going to shoot for your legs, and you've known to defend it in training. So once it happens in the fight, you can expect the same result. Pretty much, yeah. I've, I've just got to perform as I've done in training. If I do it, then like I say, it will be uh, a short night for John Fitch. Indeed. Now, as for the training, how has it been? Have you been feeling well? Any little nicks and bumps along the way, or are you coming in close to 100%? No, no, I felt great. You know, I've, I've, I've had some fantastic training partners, a variety of training partners, um, younger guys than me, faster guys than me, bigger guys than me, stronger guys than me. You know, I'm, I'm not, you know, people are often surprised at how I am, you know, I'm not, I have no ego. I don't always have the same sparring partners that I get used to, that I'm able to read. I have people that come in and in the first sparring session, they'll kick my ass, they'll take me down, they'll do this, they'll do that. But this is what the fight game's about. It's about adjusting and being able to adjust and have all these different kinds of experiences so that come fight night, you're, you're familiar with, with everything. And, you know, and if you're not familiar with it, you're able to adapt and adapt very quickly. And, uh, you know, my mind's right for this fight. So I think that that's the key um, to this fight. My mind's right. I know what I have to do. I'm relaxed and, uh, yeah, I'm ready to perform. As for adapting quickly, how soon are you going to take the trip over to San Jose so you can get adjusted and not worry about the jet lag? I've never been one. Jet lag hasn't really affected me so so badly as it affects other people. You know, my whole career I've been traveling to America, and we have a routine where I, I I'm able to adjust pretty quickly. It's never been a factor in any of my fights. Um, jet lag. So you know, I'll be traveling over early next week, and uh, as usual, and and I'll be I'll be fine with that. Well, then we can look forward to another exciting, excellent fight from the legendary Paul Daly here at Bellator 199, facing John Fitch, a worthy opponent, and would you say beating him puts you back for a rematch with Rory McDonald? Uh, beating him just brings me another fight, whoever it will be. Um, I'm not too concerned about the titles no more. I'm just, I'm just, I just want to fight. I'm 12 months left in this sport, and I just want to fight big fights fights that my fans will love um, because cause that's why I'm still here and uh, you know that's why I keep heading up these cards in America because people like to see me fight so who cares who it is it's bringing bodies well sir if it's only 12 months left I'm going to thoroughly enjoy those 12 months and I'm going to miss them when they're over this whole sport's going to miss you when you're gone so I want to say thank you for all you've done up till now and what you'll continue to do here in San Jose in just over a week. And with that, I give you the floor to plug anything you want. Oh, I've got nothing to plug. Just thank you. Uh, thanks for taking time to do this interview. And, uh, you know, I appreciate it. Thank you. No problem. Thank you as well. And thank you, Dan.